Let us now look at how we can define tension-only members within our S-ray model. Tension-only members are defined using the member type tool, much like you would define trusses or cables or any of those other types of elements. And basically, the I'm sure this is obvious, but the understanding of this is that if your member is in compression, it's not going to assign any stiffness, uh, or it's not going to have any stiffness based off of the results. And if that member is in tension, then its stiffness will contribute. And the stiffness is calculated based off of the section and the material properties and so on. And much like compression only supports, tension only members and their counterpart compression only members do require nonlinear analysis. If you were to run a linear or P delta analysis, these would be converted into their closest linear equivalent, which is a truss element. So tension only members by their name they only support tension, they don't support shear, they don't support moment, just axial loads and specifically tension loads. And for this exercise here, we've got a simple example. Uh, this is a 3D structure. And you may notice here, aside from the columns and beams and bush systems that we've defined, we've also got some bracing. And if I go to the geometry window, under the member type tool here, you can see that my bracing, for the most part, is defined as truss elements. And truss members, uh, they support axial load only. They can be loaded in tension or compression, and their stiffness will be based off of the section and material properties assigned. They can be used to model trusses or braces or whatever you need to represent that type of behavior. Now, they won't have any end moments. They are by default released about their ends, so keep that in mind when using it. Now for this exercise, we're gonna to wanna to run a nonlinear static analysis. But before I do that, I just wanna look at the loads that we have applied to this model. So go to the loads window. And here we can see that we got self-weight low cases, but we've also got a few others. We got a floor uh, dead low case, which is assigned with area loads. You can see the area loads are assigned in this case to the vertical, uh, in the vertical direction to our floors. We also have floor live with a different magnitude. We have a wind load case, which is assigned on one of the sides of our model, as you can see there, and a west wind that's on the other side. So we've got a few different types of loads and under our load combinations, We've actually combined them into different sets. We've got dead and live, dead and wind south, and dead and wind west. So one of them just has vertical loads, and two of them have vertical and lateral loads. I'm going to run a nonlinear static analysis with the default settings. So I'll go analyze, run a nonlinear static analysis, and press OK. And we get a clean solution here. And I'm going to look at the results uh, for one of the load combinations that has both lateral and vertical loads. I'll select this one here. And specifically what I'm interested in here is uh, my results for the axial loads. So I'll look at the axial force diagrams and I want to look at the bracing specifically. So I can see here within this bracing folder, I have, it's showing me just the axial forces uh, within this model within this uh, selection here. And, and positive axial force is going to represent tension and negative force is going to represent compression. And my goal, as you may remember, was for these to all be tension only members. But clearly they're not behaving that way as truss elements. Some of them have compression in them, some of them have tension. Now we could think about different ways that we could represent uh, tension only behavior. We could inactivate the members. We can change the member type to inactive, but this would change the stress stiffness matrix and it could also affect other load combinations as well. And because this series of activating and unactivating is clearly insufficient in this situation, the use of tension only members will require nonlinear analysis. So I'm going to go back to the geometry window and with this bracing folder selected, I can use the member type uh, field here in the tool and choose this tension only member type. I can also select it from the member type drop down list here. I'm just going to left click and drag my mouse around all these members. 
So I've applied this tension only member type to all the cross bracing. Now we're going to go ahead and run an analysis on our structure. Again, a nonlinear static analysis. So I'll click analyze and run a nonlinear static for just our little combinations. And we'll click OK to run. And we notice here, I didn't drag this over quick enough, but we get some diagnostic messages. We have, uh, first of all, a message here mentioning that for at least some of our load cases, or combinations rather, uh, the tension only member has become inactive. This isn't a problem. This is actually the behavior that we were hoping for because if it goes into compression, we don't want it to provide any stiffness. So this isn't an error. This is just letting us know what's happened. But we're also getting this diagnostic message indicative of some sort of instability. And if we scroll up here, we might be able to see when that occurs. So I can see load combination two and three solve fine, but I had an issue with load combination number one, where I'm getting all these instability diagnostic messages. You can see they each associated with different degrees of freedom and nodes. So why doesn't this load combination number one solve? Well, remember back to our load combinations, we had load combination number one was just the vertical loads. It had the floor dead and floor live loads, whereas the other two load combinations had some lateral loads in them as well. So without the compression bracing being in, or without compression, sorry, the bracing is going into an inactive form. It's not providing any stiffness. So the model is actually becoming unstable because there's no lateral forces to induce tension in those uh, tension only members. And that gets back to a similar uh, situation that we saw during the, the cantilever retaining wall exercise, where if we were to run just to low cases and we had a low case with just lateral loads, we would have an unstable model because we wouldn't be providing any compression into those ground springs. So the unrealistic cases don't necessarily solve. Nonlinear analysis can be a little bit unforgiving for nonlinear or for unrealistic situations. And again, that goes back to the compression only supports where if we just had only lateral loads on our, on our retaining wall, those compression only supports wouldn't be in compression. They wouldn't provide any stiffness, so the model would be unstable. But the reality is that there would never be that situation. You'd have the weight of the shear wall to provide some loads, but you know, like load cases kind of compartmentalize, compartmentalize your loads into different categories, and then you combine them later on into more realistic load combinations. So the solution would be to model these loads more realistically. And maybe we want to account for some lack of plumbness or some notional loads. We could do that here within our load combination. So if I go to the geometry window, and, or sorry, the loads window, and I go to edit load combinations, I can specify for this load combination number one, dead and live, a small notional load factor. I'm going to go 0.005 in X and Y. So it's just going to induce some lateral loads that I'm then going to be able to induce those tensile forces. And if I run the nonlinear static analysis, now that I'm considering my uh, notional loads, you can see here that it's gotten rid of uh, that previous diagnostic message indicating instability because those notional loads are inducing some tension in those tension only members, so they're active and it's not leading to instability. And if I proceed here and look at the results, again, I'll look at the results for the dead and live load combination, specifically the bracing folder. I can look at the axial force diagram tool here, and I can see that I only have positive loads within my axial force uh, diagrams for this particular load combination. The same thing goes for my dead and wind in the south and the west directions. So they are behaving the way I wanted to. If the Brace is found to have compression, it's not going to have any stiffness, and other elements will have to take up those loads.